Welcome back to Belly of Guernsey Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallace and we are going diving. And you're going to come with me if you're watching this. Well, you have to unless you uh, turn off now. Boys are ready on the boat. It's Wednesday, 12 o'clock. Noonday gun's just gone off at the castle, so we're heading out. See if we can get some scallops. Looks like Richard's already been for a dive today. Yeah, it's time for us to get up in the morning, you know. Time to do the early shift. Yeah. This is yeah. they call lunchtime. <laughs> uh, Looks like you had a few. I've up and out there, I've lugged yeah, a yeah, but... 10 kilo cast iron bath this morning. It's quite a bit of tide. It's quite dusty at, at times. Oh, so we got all that to look forward to. Yeah, no, no, you'll have it nice. <laughs> and you'll have a lot of water. Low water as well. Awesome. She starts well, eh? She starts well. <laughs> she's going to forget the crank handle out there. She never gets cold, that's the issue. <laughs> no. And yet, yeah, it's winter now, so the bonnets are on. Even Richard's got his bonnet on today. These for somebody. Yeah, we've got that. Scallop frills. Oh, is there frills in there? No, that's green beef. Oh, that's Oh, we better take them with us. Chop them back in the sea. In the sea, they smell good, eh? Reminds me of a girl wants me. <laughs> Ursula. <laughs> I'll get my dozen for you. You don't enjoy it. Well, I heard something about 75 you had the other day. I know. Well, the camera broke down. <laughs> no, I was still filming. I just saw one long dive. <laughs> 75 is good for me. Yeah, nice and easy to grab. <laughs> Christine, Dartmouth. It's not as good as the can that we went on, she's a bit smaller that one. Something nice about tugs. You can't beat a good tug, eh? You can't beat a tug. You know, a good tug. The bigger the tug, the better. And the longer the tug, or? You the longer the tug's good, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they're that big, you need a lot of hands on them. <laughs> Many hands make deck light hands. work. Deck hands. Deck hands, yeah, deck hands. Look at the weather. Where's the sun? We need the sun. I better get ready because I'm going in first. And at the moment, I've still got my uh, my suit off. So let's get ready and see what we can get.
Nani? too bad. We've got 180 bar left so we're all good. Let's see what other scallops we can get. Plenty of small ones around here. Well now after the small ones. Or after the big ones. Looks like a bit of an old trawl. I think these are the bottom parts. The bits that roll across the seabed. Obviously been lost. that rumbling in the background that's one of the other scallop trolls dragging across the bank over a mile away I would have guessed over this trench every single time. This is the first of two trenches with the cable in. Got to go down, up and over. Sometimes we're lucky, sometimes there's scallops in there. There's always stuff living on either side of it. I'm ready to hunt down anything that swims past. I'm not sure why this thing doesn't actually claps in or fill itself. Doesn't seem to though for some reason. It's been here a while, a few years. Just turn my lights back on. At least you can see in colour though. I think I can see one. Yep. All sorts of shells here. Got razor clams and uh, Dulcinea clams and all sorts. Something's been digging here. Probably uh, red mullet, given it's that time of year where there's quite a lot of red mullet around. I 
There's our arch enemy. A large uh, spiny starfish. That's basically trying to sniff out what we're trying to sniff out. I think I've been a little bit more successful than him. And I only say a little. Because I haven't got actually that many in my bag yet. He's actually slowly moving if you look at it. Carry on. We're going to come up to the second trench soon. This is normally where you find the scallops. In between both of these trenches. bag some sort of black bag of some sort probably someone's rubbish in it been dumped here a while it's all ripped apart I don't normally see those around here. This is a little brittle star, absolutely tiny. There is seabeds around Guernsey, like up near the M43, which is completely covered in these little brittle stars. Looks like he's not alive, but he is. I'll put him back. actually not a very far swim to get to the next trench won't take us long probably only about 25 30 meters not quite sure what formed that hole got a leathery pouch so it's probably some sort of sea worm seen fan uh, more scallops Turn my lights off so you can see what the ambient light's like. It's not too bad. Quite light today. We're in 20 metres of water. Got 14 minutes left. Loads of air. Because I'm going to do two dives, I'm going to split this tank in half. So I'm going to be going up in about 25 bars time. See if we can find this other trench. <laughs> You understand that that's trench number two didn't take us long to find it because even though you can't see it this is on a bit of a slope so we just swim along the slope and don't go any deeper or any shallower and here 20 meters i've found the i don't know i think this is like some sort of connector I'm not sure what it is don't know if it's a booster or some sort i know um when electricity gets sent over long distances it needs a bit of a boost but Let's take a look at it. Still got the strops on, lifting strops. It's definitely connected to the cable. So the cable comes out the back there. It's bolted on. You just about see it. And there's some strops, some eyelets, some shackles. And there's a length of rope, which I don't know. I may have gone up to a buff on the surface at one time. But you can see all the strops and all the chains. And there's the uh, connector. I think it might just be a connection block of some sort. But under here you can see the black cable still. I hope no one puts their anchor through it. I won't touch it, I'll just waft the sand off of it so you can see it. But that there is a uh, main cable coming into the island from France. Well, via Jersey. It goes all the way up there and up a slipway. And you can see the trench is still here. Still hasn't filled itself in. So I think this cable is not far under the surface. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But let's carry on. Can 
you hear the scallop cages bouncing off the seabed? I think that might have hit a bit of a uh, hard bottom there and it's just bouncing. Don't think that's in the sand. Right, we're getting short on, on the air now. Uh, bottom time's alright, still got 12 minutes, but we better go back to the surface. Save the rest of this tank for another dive. What's this? Not quite sure what that is. It's an old pot of some sort. Looks like it's got enamel on it. Might even be like a fragment of a bath. Let's go back up to the surface anyway. Hey, that's not too bad, believe it or not. Look at that. As soon as I hit the surface, the boat's there. Might have something to do with the free bounces that I gave the boff just before I come up. Hand my bag to Matt. Scallops are starting to get thin in this area. For me. Right. It's not bad for me. First dive over and done with. Seeing all sorts. And you see that big old torpedo thing looking thing. That's, I think that's a connector on the uh, mains power cable that comes from Jersey across here up this east coast into the bay, up the bay, up the slipway, the middle of the slipway over there and into a planter where there used to be a fountain years ago. Well, I think that's kicking out something like 90,000 volts. I think there's two of them. But yeah, uh, water, 90,000 volts, electric. You didn't want to stay around there too long, just in case. It's Matt's turn now. Look at the collar on the water. almost like really ripply emotional time of year wasn't many down there right eh? get uh, very thin very thin not actually that many smalls either uh, I don't know what he's talking about <laughs> Oh, whew. water temperature, 16 degrees. Feels a lot warmer to be honest, feels like 18, 19, but uh, we're yet to get that easterly. So as soon as we get an easterly wind, uh, it makes it a bit, a bit rough on the surface. It basically just absorbs, and just takes all the, uh, the heat out of the water. I haven't seen any dolphins or tuna in a while, so maybe they've gone off somewhere else. There's another boat up here, that's a trawler, he's going for scallops as well. It's like an unwritten rule, well it's not even an unwritten rule. We do the inside, he does the outside. There's no rocks out there so he can drag all he likes on the sand. But if he starts pulling in here, he's just going to lose his gear on the rocks. And as you see, there's little reefs everywhere. Right, going back up again, tide's going south, Matt's going in. You want me to take the wheel? We get our scallops sorted. I said to Richard, I get the dozen. That's so engaged. 29 for me, 53 for Paul. 53? 53. 53. That's almost a break. Matt's just radio in the harbour, see if we can dive here. Nah. Well, I think there's two condors in there. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. yeah. There's the Voyager and Liberation, that's the one, Voyager and Liberation. Fast, fast ones are uh, hiding in here. Back under the water straight away. 
So we're going to go down. I'm going into a slightly shallower spot now. This is a place I know there's fish. I know there's flat fish around here. Uh, fingers crossed we see one and manage to get one. Also, it's an area which I know is uh, okay for small uh, bream and stuff like that. And there's also eelgrass, which is on the edge. If you stay still, bream should come to you. I can see one already. He's just in front of us, eh? See a little whitey silvery thing? Now, I'm not quite sure what this is. I think it could be a gilt head or it could be a cooch's, but I think it's a baby gilt head. Looking at the yellow type of eye. They're really funny because they uh, they'd be very protective. They just swim very slowly around you. Always looking back at you to make sure. Almost like he's sort of saying, come on, let's swim over here. He wants me to be part of his shoal. Yeah, you're struggling to swim there, so I'm definitely not going to be swimming that direction. So I'm going to turn around and go the opposite way. Go with the tide rather than against it. Now I know for a fact there's less scallops in this area, but where there's less, there's actually larger ones in size. So, let's see how we get on. love how they change colour. So when you first see them from far away they're nice bright red and as you swim past them or we'll get closer to them so when they see you they normally change to a paler white colour. Scallops are definitely big around here but there's definitely a lot less of them. just kind of skimming down the side of like the mill beds this is like leading onto the mill beds so every so often you see it get a lot more grainy a lot more coarser Same old trick, follow the rope along and you'll tend to find scallops alongside bits of rope. And plenty of rope around here as well, here's one. Is it big enough though? Yep, looks like it is. Coloration on these as well, they're nice and pink.
sometimes when you're diving you can't even see a scallop you can just see like a divot stick your finger in hey presto And then you get the real easy ones you see from miles away, like this one, huge as well, and his brother, also huge. This is kind of how you want the scallop to be, one after the other. So there's five within about, no, one and a half meters. When there's when it's like this, it is literally fill your bag in no time. But it's never normally that good. And I'm running out of air, so I need to keep an eye on that. Soon, time to go up. An old crab pot. Let's go and check. Might be lucky. Might get a lobster inside. I can see another, nope, maybe that isn't, I thought that was a bream, but it's not, I think it's a coma fish, or some sort of small wrasse, nice and stripy though, I'm sure there will be other breams around here, there he is, using that crab pot as a bit of protection from larger prey, I haven't seen any other uh, breams yet, I might just have to wait here. If you just wait, you know, just keep keep still. They're coming to us. I've got 50 bar left. Come on. Please. Bream, come to me. Got 28 minutes left on the bottom, so plenty of time. Let's just wait. There he is. Ah, we got one already. Now, is this the same one? Mm, not sure if it is. No, this one's got little white bits on the end of his tail. So is this one a gilt head or is this one a cooch's? I'm going to say this one's definitely a gilt head, but it's got cooch's colours. Write in the comments if you know for sure. So I can't really tell. This one's a lot speedier than the other one. Slightly bigger. I'd love to stay down here all day, but we got to go up. I'm starting to run out of air. I love it when the boat's there just waiting for you. Every so often I just see someone poke their head over the gunnel and look down at me. Can't really see divers under the water. Well, not that easy anyway. Just doing my safety stop and then it's up we go. Lift bag's just come up. Looks big as well. So is it a crab pot? I don't think it's... Out a lot of scallops. Yeah, there's a... Um... There's a lot of air in that bag. Is it a cannibal? I don't think it is. That's a Clarence battery. They all would have floated one out here. Uh, looks like a big crab pot, I think. Are you going to get it? It's a big old crab pot by the looks of it. Doesn't look too shabby. Oh yeah, I can see why he said that. Yeah, no nice. Look at the little crab as well, look. What's that, Matt? The, the little it? crab. The little top knot as well, look. Yeah. <laughs> Poor we top knot. Yeah, we were just talking about top knots. Don't go down there. Don't go down there, we'll never see you ever again. Some sort of little white crab. Not quite sure what that is. Look at that, little top knot. Yeah. Your little baby. This is his mouth game. <laughs> That's him struggling to breathe, probably. Well, I should put him back, <laughs> Yeah, let's put him back. No. No. Bad seagull. There he goes. He's gone. 
<laughs> See what else has come up in this pot. Been down for a while because this red weed started growing. So we know it's below 12 meters. Oh, look what else we got here. Look at this. I think this is a long legged spider crab, I think. That's an incredible green. Green? That's an incredible orange. Put that back as well. Think he's ready to come out? Anything else in there living? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, that there, look at that. Some camo there as well. What is that? What sort of crab is that? Oh, it's pinching me, it's pinching me. If you know what crab that is. Ooh. It's like white, look, it's like sugar. He has done alright, look at that. Oh, it's one of those ones. Alright. Crab part's good. Yeah, you got a good crab part. Like... Like... Oh, no, no. You sent a top knot up with it. Oh, <laughs> the baby top knot. Just talking about top knots, and then one fell out of the crab part. <laughs> yeah, and, the old, uh... and that, whatever that is, it's like a white. It's like, a, it's like a sugar lump, mate. Yeah, if you know what that is. I'll take a couple of photographs of as well. It's that time though, we've got to head back home. Two dives done. Hope you enjoyed that. 